And in this vein, our next experimental longlister is quietly placed on the edge of the charming and traditional Peak District. Architect Damien Burroughs has come to take a look. This is Stackyard, a Derbyshire stone cottage that just slightly distorts and warps what you'd expect to find in the village. Placed oddly at 90 degrees to the road, with no standard tiled roof either, rather corrugated cement. The plywood inside is also not what you'd expect. Stackyard is a low-key experiment by architect James Boone, who designed it for him and his wife, Carol. You enter the house from the side via the south-facing courtyard, which provides a welcoming private space. The ground floor consists of a guest bedroom, utility, bathroom and master bedroom. Upstairs, there's a double-height kitchen and living area with a cosy study for good measure. Hi. Hi. Hi, James. How are you? Nice to meet you. Carol. Hello. Nice to meet you. Not least in its shape. James decided against building a conventional rectangular plan. Instead, the house was turned on its side and shape-shifted to the irregular plot size, leaving more space for a south-facing garden. We had quite a big garden before, and I wanted to take the essence of that with us. We thought we'll just have to kind of compress everything to almost miniature. We need just one veg bed, so we squeezed one in, and then I've got a miniature greenhouse. Well, that's one way to downsize, shrink everything. The experiment continues inside. See, this is unusual. James and Carol built this house for under £160,000, which meant finding a low-cost but beautiful way of finishing the interior. So they covered the walls with plywood. It might take visiting townsfolk some time to adjust, not only to the materials and surfaces, but also the layout. The bedrooms are downstairs, the main living space is above. When you come up into this space, you can really understand why you flip the arrangement round. Yeah, by putting the living space upstairs, not only do we get glimpses between the houses to the countryside in the distance, but all of this volume just means that the floor space we've got here feels bigger. This is much nicer, this way around. This is the bit you live in, so it's more important to have a view. It's got everything they could ever need. It is bespoke, and yet all on a budget. There's a custom-made dining table built into the stairs to save space. And in the study, they pulled a clever trick with the shelving. The RIBA judges admired Stackyard for its sensitivity, the way a new house had been made to fit and fit in right in the heart of a rural Derbyshire village. This is a very clever house. It punches way above its modest weight. It's designed to sit comfortably with its neighbours. It's experimental and innovative, which I think makes it a very exciting place to live. Our next longlister pushes the limits of what's possible with eco-buildings. Michelle is in Buckinghamshire to find it. This is Lark Rise. Hidden among the trees of the picturesque Chiltern Hills, it's a super low-energy experimental green home. On the ground floor is the master bedroom and guest room, both with ensuite bathrooms, as well as a boot room and combined plant and utility room. Upstairs, the central staircase separates two spaces. A living room on one side and a combined kitchen dining area on the other. It was the idea of a Swiss psychiatrist and animal lover, Hanny Wiedekehr, who commissioned it. Hanny's dislike of waste led her to build a house that didn't waste a thing. Lark Rise holds onto every last bit of energy there's high-performance triple glazing, insulated window frames, and super-thick insulation. 
Even the heat from the oven is saved and used to keep the rooms warm. This house doesn't just save energy, it generates more than it uses. It's a mini power station, one of the first of its kind in the UK, with 38 solar panels on the roof. The RIBA judges praised Lark Rise as a revolutionary net energy positive building. They also admired the high quality craftsmanship and the atmosphere of serenity the building has. You see that the beams are horizontal and not vertical because this makes the house inviting and friendly. If it would be vertical, we would feel like you go in a jail or I don't know what. There's not a whiff of the penitentiary about the semi-open plan first floor. Delicate, low-carbon, eco-concrete supports divide this wide and wonderful space into a living room, central staircase, and a kitchen to the left. There are no prison bars at the windows either. The landscape seems to pour into the building. We want to look out now, so the cladding had to be that way. There really is a kind of very natural sense of flow here that I, I feel is helped completely by all the materials that surround us. Which are tactile and the real thing too. Downstairs, the structural concrete makes its cool presence felt throughout the corridors and bedrooms. The smooth, poured walls have been left as they were, straight out of the mould that made them. Everything's been pared back to the minimum, even the doors. I mean, why have two when you can have one? The house took two painstaking years to build. To make it as efficient as possible, it was heavily insulated and made airtight. Overseeing every stage of the project was Hanny's architect, Justin Beer. Building a radical, innovative home like this is a remarkable achievement. More so for Hanny, because she doesn't plan to live in it. I have over 10 dogs, and I have alpacas, and many, many more animals. I couldn't have that in this place, so I stay where I am. We've done this as a kind of an example yes. to kind of show people what's possible. Hanny is a trailblazer. In the long term, we'll all benefit from this. Right now, it's the tenants, Zoe and Ian. Living here is um, quite different from living in an ordinary house because the bills were an awful lot less. The electricity bills, yeah. Yeah. Council tax isn't. Yeah. <laughs>